I'm not in a good mood. This is Lauren. <laughs> For all you listeners out there, just be happy that you're not in the room with me, that you're far away right now at this point listening to this in the future. And you don't have to deal with my tood right now because I feel like I have one. A big fat tood that's sitting on my shoulder, kind of like the little devil in Emperor's New Groove. You know the one. I watched that movie two nights ago, actually. It's such a good movie. Probably, we've talked about this, but Disney's funniest movie ever made, I would say. Well, Heavyweights was also made by Disney. So it depends. Do you want, like, are you going comedy? Or wait, are you going, like, live action? Or are you going animation? Because animation would be Emperor's New Groove. Live action, it would be Heavyweights. So, fun fact. Oh, I'm going to save this fun fact for later. Now, I'll tell you now. I bought four Perkis Power tank tops from Heavyweights, the movie. Tony Perkis. Yeah. That's all I got. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Unhitched or Dad Trying. Uh, My name is Cameron Carter, and with me is... You know her. You love her. She's... All sorts of dandy right now. Thank and you. Super chilled and mellowed out. Pissed I, is the other word. And pissed. <laughs> I don't you know, know why. You know, you you wear your mellow like you know, you wear your yellow and yellow mm. is piss is yellow, right? True. Right. So Gross. I <laughs> <laughs> And my name's Lauren Neat. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for um, coming to the point and sharing your name. I think it's all this is a safe space that we've created here. Let's all be up front. Let's be ourselves. Let's say who we are. Feel My how name we is feel. Cameron Carter, and I am also okay right now. Hey, we're reflecting that off of each other. I hold my mirror up, and it reflects your mood, and you hold your mirror up, and it reflects my mood. Mm-hmm. But through that, we see each other clearly. That's true. So if you think about it, it's like this isn't a mirror at all. It's like a, a plexiglass it's a pexiglass it's a pexiglass it's a pixie stick and it's a pixie stick and we both know we love pixie sticks who doesn't love pixie sticks? anyway this here is a podcast that finally (laughs) answers that age-old stinking question whose life is better is it singles yes is it marrieds yes or is it parents yes so i'm the father part lauren you're like this weird unhitched part yeah i'm the single part or unhitched, either way. We can... Unhitched. So, Lauren, um, something's been on my mind for a little while. Um, mm-hmm. By a little while, I mean like six seconds ago. I really got to get it out here. Okay. Um, how's it going? Oh, not great. Well, if we know that. <laughs> let's. So, how's this week been for you? This week has been horrible, Oh, Cameron. okay. Horrible. I really am trying to ask a question that gives us a pot. Well, oh, I... oh, no. Let me just explain. Okay. For all you singletons out there... Sometimes, sometimes you're like, you get excited about Mm -hmm. meeting someone. I actually met a cool person. I met a cool dude and I really enjoyed him. And then I had to break up. We had to, we had to end it, but. Well, let's get into this. Let's, let's unpack this. Let's unpile. What's his name? Where does he live? What's his number? (laughs) Social security number. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's single and ready to mingle just like you right now. Let's no. I'm obviously ready to mingle. I'm just. I'm you, I'm catching flies with all this honey over here, <laughs> sweet as can be today. No, I it was it was it sucked because anyway it sucks when you you actually like someone and then but you you're not 17 anymore and you can't just date someone because you like them like you need more foundation than that I guess right like they have to be good at rollerblading that's <laughs> crucial right that, yeah like <laughs> my my 17 year old like must have list was like um must beat me in the skating rink race yeah must beat me at uh the roller skating rink uh must beat me at (laughs) at roller derby they must be superior than me in all ways that have to do with wheels i mean with with their wheelie ways yeah (laughs) He must um, be wheelie wheelie fast. Yeah, you know, I want my boyfriend to be wheelie wheelie fast um, with wheels. Yeah, um, and like, must did you be ever able... want to date Wheels from the Burger King Club? Because he was pretty cool. I don't even know who that is. He was the cool kid in the wheelchair from the Bur- Burger King Club. You don't I, remember that? 
I don't remember that, and I can honestly say no, I didn't. Okay, I didn't look at any of those characters and. Lust. <laughs> in lust? Okay, that's probably good. Yeah. You know, lusting after fictional cartoons that never really had a series might be a good take on, you know, and that's a good moral to have. I wish I would have had that same so, thought with Mulan. It, it, <laughs> not the not the woman, but the man in Mulan. He's so hot. Yeah, so let's talk about other cartoon lusts. What, what other lusts have there been in your life? Oh, uh, Flynn Rider from Tangled. Oh really? He's hot. Uh, so Flynn is the the male um, semi hero in this. Yes, kind okay. of the anti hero. He's a thief and he turns into a good guy. Mm, love it. Another guy. What a bad boy. I, what about um, the old man from Up? Oh yeah, he's really. <laughs> he knows how to love a woman. He well, that's true. We saw that. We got to see the the long and short of it. Really, mm-hmm. the long compacted into the short of just a man that was completely put himself before anyone else put himself before anyone else? i think so well he put her before in himself i mean yeah i mean the Is that opposite mean? i meant okay. the opposite okay that's what i was going for i knew it um so okay we have the old man from up we have um that's good Flynn rider Flynn the rider. guy from mulan and um, captain chang shang yeah. We have someone here that knows his name. Oh, well, well, let's find out what that name is. Yeah. Mysterious guest. Mysterious. Please reveal that name now. Hello, everybody. My name is Sang. <laughs> Similar to Captain Shang. Cap. Without the H. <laughs> and I'm a female. Captain Shang. Yes. Mary's Sang. Yes, I did have a crush on Captain Shang. You Sang. did. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like, that's good. He's not in the family. Well, Sing. if you couldn't tell, I am Asian. I know. I knew what? It. Sing, I had tell. a feeling. I know. <laughs> I had a feeling. And so, here we are. you know, growing up, Mulan was the only Asian Disney character, and Shang was the only Asian male character. So, it only makes sense that I would fall in love with him. Agreed. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about knowing that he was my only cartoon crush for a long time until Flynn Rider? Does that surprise you? A little bit. Yeah. I feel like everyone is usually, they're like, really? And then they go, oh yeah, me too. Which is interesting. Because I'm like, hmm. So maybe after a second thought, they're then there and they're like, yeah. "Yeah." They're like, "Not not Eric, Prince Eric from Little Mermaid. And I'm like, no, no. I want to say no if you Captain have to have Shane. a second thought about it, it probably wasn't a legitimate crush. It's just that, hey, I want to be, I want to relate to you. Like, me too. You're probably right. right? But so, okay, anyway. so actually, I want to ask both of you. Yes. I've answered. Who are your animated crushes? Oh, I think we should always uh, let the guests go first. Um, who have you lusted over uh, in terms <laughs> of, of cartoons in your life? That is a drawn figure. I was really into Aladdin, actually. Okay, we're talking really? lust, not just crushes. Oh. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Did hey. we lust as children? <laughs> mm, <laughs> debatable. Let's unpack that. Can children lust? Oh no. Um, I don't like let's, just, let's change it to crush. <laughs> oh. This is not. This is unwelcome territory. I feel uncomfortable. I want to. We all do. Yeah. Uh, who were your uh, cartoon crushes growing up? Saying. Yeah, I I would say Aladdin. I mean, Aladdin. he rocked that little vest mm-hmm. and his he little did. hat. I know? couldn't pull that off. Those abs. You know, I went to a Noah's Ark party when I was eight years old. That's interesting. Wait. It's, it's an anti... It's an not anti, what you It's an anti-Halloween party. Because Halloween is, as we all know, sin. Wait. And um, so for Noah's Ark party, what? I decided to dress as Aladdin. But you know what? You just can't go to a, sh- a church shirtless. Because that's essentially what the dude was. The dude was, you know, he was packing the maps and he wanted to show it off. He want, you know, a maybe I'll put a little purple vest it's over hot. me. It's hot. Those Arabian nights. Oh, man. Those Arabian nights were that's- so cool. But those Arabian days, so hot. Hotter than hot. No, that is a dirty song. Arabian nights, like Arabian days, are hotter than hot. Um... More hotter than not in a lot of good ways. Oh, wow. Ara- yeah, it's about sexy time. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Just there are a lot of sexy times in that movie. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean the, the magic carpet. They yeah. did ride that thing together. Oh, they man. did. They did all sorts of things to that carpet, if you really think about it. <laughs> she they... did have a big kitty. Oh. <laughs> and, um... And that's and you know what wasn't I think there like he a, little... a couple times? <laughs> <laughs> so 
we need the little E on this one. <laughs> the little E for exciting. <laughs> exciting. Uh, guys, so. Yes? Magic Carpet, uh, in terms of sexiness of cartoon characters, where do you put it? I Guys, I want to know how you really feel about this. How I, If I think the carpet's sexy? Yeah. <laughs> of all inanimate objects that were given life in Disney cartoons, where do you rank it? Oh, well, I would rank it Because then you get like, into Beauty and the Beast, and it's like, you know. Yeah, I would rank man? it like like three. Three? Oh. One would be Candle Guy from Candle Beauty guy. and the Beast. Lumiere. That guy was hot as wax. Lumiere. Yeah, Lumiere. I would actually, you know what? You're right. Rank it two, because I would be a Lumiere, Carpet, mm-hmm. Cogsworth. Mrs. Potts. Mrs. Potts. Mrs. Potts. The Wardrobe. The Wardrobe. Um, Chip. <laughs> Oh, Chip. That's probably good. He was so innocent. Uh, that's probably good. Yeah. Still, this, for myself, yeah. getting back to the main rating, outside of Disney, did, did we say Disney cartoons? I can't remember. Any cartoon. It can be any cartoon. Um, not an adult cartoon. Non adult cartoon. Um, guys, that's a toughie. I, I asked before I even knew an answer. Um, you have to. There were so many. There's so many more, like, beautiful cartoon females uh pocahontas maybe really i liked pocahontas nice um and sh- but that's not it there was someone near and dear to me nala hey that's fair <laughs> i liked nala you know simba. i had a thing for simba i like yeah. simba mm-hmm. i mean you know. His name <laughs> i know when he was Hello. teenage simba hot hot dog <laughs> lauren Lanky. um and there's something there uh Timon and Pumbaa. There's something... You no, know, no, no. You never felt it? No attraction to Timon okay. nor Pumbaa. Gotcha. But Mufasa? Yeah. Mufasa. I would say. Very like, confident. If, if you're a girl and you've got daddy issues, Mufasa's probably your number one. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've got uncle issues, then Rafiki might be there too. No, Scar. 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 Um, Rafiki's just the wise old baboon. But he's very uncle-like. He is uncle-like. He's very uncular. He's more godfather-like. Hmm. Maybe. I see that. <laughs> Did you know Rafiki means friend in Swahili? I did know that. That I was wondering. Friend, uncle. When I was in Kenya, this has been, they would I know always, that. <laughs> <laughs> they would be like, ah, Rafiki, welcome. And I was like, what the heck? And they were calling me Rafiki all the time. And until then, I then when you learned. would leave, they'd be like, there goes Red Butt. And I'd be like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but saying saying knows a lot of languages. She's very yeah, linguistically gifted. Really, I only know two fluently, but I know a lot of phrases and a lot of languages. So you know a little bit of Swahili, right? Yes. And where where does this come from? Did you maybe spend time in Africa? I have, but not in places that have spoken Swahili. Uh-huh. I've met a lot of people here who are from there. Oh. Yeah. So where have you been in the old uh, elephant trunk continent? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call it, right? Yeah, it looks like an elephant. It's the ears it. and the, the Madagascar is the trunk, the the horn part of the trunk. Madagascar the is separate. Oh no! I know what you're saying. I know what you're, the horn Thank of you. Africa. Yeah, is I'm the making horn. complete Ethiopia. sense. Ethiopia, e- sure. Somalia. I don't yeah, know. Somalia. Whatever the pointy part. That's the trunk. Mm-hmm. Somalia. Well, <laughs> saying has an African necklace. We can look at that and learn, but also. Oh. She spends a lot of time in um, Zambia for her job. Yes, this is correct. And do you wish to share with everyone what you do for a living? Because I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, sure. I work for an orphan ministry in Zambia, and it's called Every Orphan's Hope. Uh huh. We have 12 family homes that are all headed by a widow, and each home has up to eight orphans. And they form a new family together and grow up together. That is so cool. Yeah, so I get to... Help them communicate what they're all about. So I hope I'm doing a good enough job telling you. You're doing a great do. job. You're doing good. You're probably reaching a solid 20 people right now. <laughs> so, they, hey, that's 20 people you don't have to meet in person. That's true. Mm. So you, you're there frequently. I think, our, is it public? We can edit this if it's not. That you're going to be off to Africa in a couple months. This is true. That's this, exciting. This fall, I'm going for six months. So what's your, what's your biggest fear? That I'm going to catch malaria. No, just and just die. in life. Is it really? Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> malaria, really? Yeah. It kills more people than um, most other diseases in in the world. If, if it makes Great. you feel better, I knew a Great. kid who was with YWAM and went down to somewhere in Africa. He caught malaria 
he's fine. Oh, I think it's really common there, and so if mm-hmm. I were to catch it, they would be able to treat it really quickly. Right. But yeah. I still would not like to catch it. Right, you're like, I'd prefer, I'd prefer to not. To not. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get too far into her Africa move, mm-hmm. yes. we need to define which camp she's in. Ah, uh, yes. She's in my camp. She is on the single team. Oh, yes. With me. I mean, not with me, <laughs> but like on my team in our camp. Separate so tents, but like we're next to each other. But still team. Team, yeah. What is your team name? We didn't. We never went over team names. Well, you got to. Uh, so Same. you're in the single team. Do y'all want to congregate real quick? Uh, yeah. Uh, give us two seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you back? Okay. We came to an agreement. All right. What did you decide? Our team name is um, Seeing Gals. Ah, I love that. Thank you. Sing Gals. We what? can't sing, but... Or in my case, Sang Gals. <gasps> I was wondering why you didn't hit that yet. I was about to say it. Because then that would just be her. But well, it, but if you crew. think about the ultimate definition of single is you are alone. <laughs> That's wow. true. Sing, thank so you, sing, sing, so sing when she leaves. gets the name. <laughs> so when you're here, you're you're sing gals. When you're alone, your team sang gal. This is true. Yeah, I like that. Speaking of gal, you're Lauren gal. Speaking alone. of gals, mm-hmm. yeah. What are we talking about today, Cam? Cam. Well, forget my team name. We're Sorry. talking about. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw such a perfect segue. I jumped on it too soon. Okay, let's keep it going. No, I want to know what your team name is. Uh, team. Uh, Team muffins, <laughs> muffins. Yeah, <laughs> guys, because we we shake, we bake, we turn out right, and we make other little muffins, and we're the the married muffin uh, men. men, the married <laughs> muffin men, the married muffin men. Is how Amy's a part of this group too. <laughs> sure, uh, Amy's and a part. Ellie. Amy's team married muffin man. <laughs> Do you know the Muffin Man? Well, you do now. <laughs> um, but let's get over to that tasty transition you're about to do with Team Gals. Gals. Godot. Gal Godot. Gal Godot. <laughs> Thank you, Dave Shumka, who hosts uh, our my favorite podcast on podcasting yourself, for telling us how to properly pronounce Gal Godot. <laughs> Gal Godot. Gal Godot. Gal Godot. Shall we get into it? Let's do All it. Right. Okay, so this week on Unhitch for Dad Trying, our outing and experience was the movies once again. Here we are a couple months after I Love, the very famous and very successful I Love Movies Month that we were all a part of. We're hitting the movie theater up once again to be a part of this great sensation that's now one month old. Wonder Woman, right? Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. She's yeah. she's strong. She's a female, and we definitely know that. Um, <laughs> it's in the title. She, it's in the title. It's very apparent. And she's um, wonderful, right? Wouldn't you say, Lauren? I would say so. I think she... Yes. So let I want to give us a little bit of backstory on Wonder Woman, because for the layman or the lay woman, <laughs> you might not know, right? Right. And so we know this is a yet again another superhero movie from the DC universe. It's um, you know we've kind of gotten a sneak preview of Wonder Woman from the Batman v the great success Batman v Superman, but we kind of with this movie really really get into the backstory. But let's talk about outside of the movie universe. Where's Wonder Woman been over the past few years? And so for that, why don't you hit us with some of them tasty facts? Some of them tasty facts. Will you send a fax to me with the facts? Yeah, I'll fax you the facts. Fact. And, and this has been a fun bit on facts. Yeah. Okay, interesting fact. William Moulton Marston, who yeah. created Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. also invented the lie detector test. Did he really? I don't know. Am I telling the truth? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to William, we could find out. Yes, you are. And that was a fun, fun pack. Thank you. Also, Wonder Woman's iconic bracelets were directly inspired by one of Marston's wives. One of Marston's wives. Ah. I don't know. 
Um, did did the first one die because she tried to deflect bullets with it and it just didn't work? <laughs> she didn't do, it's, may she rest in peace. No, it says he was only legally married to one woman, but he also had two kids with another woman. Ooh. And then the woman that had his kids married him. She wore bracelets on each wrist to symbolize their relationship. Oh. Yeah. Cool. I would just go for a ring. I mean, that's the classic. Yeah. Classic. But hey, do what you got to do. Yeah. In 1942, Wonder Woman was banned for not wearing enough clothes. Mm-hmm. What? I could see that. Risque. Uh, yeah, ris- risky and risque, mm-hmm. especially in that era. Huh. She was very nearly called Suprema. Mm-hmm. Does that sound like a pizza to you? Yeah, that sounds like a teenage witch. <laughs> what, <laughs> what other names, like if you had to come up with another name for Wonder Woman? I would go with Lasso uh, Chalasso. Lasso Lass. Lasso Lass. Man, that's actually that's really good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I would go with um, Bertha Minerva. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sexy name, that Bertha. Uh, Maybe like Fraulein Amazonian. Oh, Fraulein. No, I don't know. Got a little bit of German in there. <laughs> sure. sure. Uh, I would go with Amazonian um, tear ta- caker. Caretaker. Tear caker. <laughs> carrot cake. <laughs> Car- carrot caker. She can whip up an invisible carrot cake that's out of this world. Better than anyone else. Um, so I'm... Uh, do you have any other tasty facts or is that it? Uh, I think... Can we go back here? Um, this is going to be a spoilers heavy episode, but don't worry. The whole freaking world's seen this movie by now, so I do not give a crap. Are we in agreement? Spoilers? Yes. All yes. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sing. Sing. Where? <laughs> yes. You saw this movie. I Who did. did you see it with, and where? I saw it with my friend Jenny, and in a movie theater. Cool. Of all that's places. The best place mm-hmm. to see it. What movie mm-hmm. theater did you pick? AMC. Oh, that's because a good one. Because the tickets are four dollars. Frugal. Mm-hmm. Mm. Brains and beauty. It's like a movie theater in a mall that's shutting down. <laughs> Fun. It's the a movie little theater creepy. is the only thing in this mall that it's, is still open. It's creepy after dark because it is like an abandoned mall. It is. Yeah. There's like circus clubs that meet there after dark. Circus clubs? Yeah. Well, that's my nightmare. So It's true. I bumped into them before. <laughs> oh, like circus gangs? No, like a club. Like, like people a club that juggle s- and people that ride unicycles. and. Oh my gosh. Yeah. When you bumped into one, did like a bunch of like dice and like yeah, flowers fall out of their out. coat? They fell and like and I just a ran. trapeze bar too, right? <laughs> <laughs> they were in a unitard underneath their clothes. <laughs> oh, um, they invited me to come. I bet they did. They're always <laughs> looking for more members of the circus club. <laughs> I am so glad the circus is almost dead. It is, <laughs> wow! Right, this is something that should not be going on this day and age. Good riddance to Barnum freaking Bailey, whoever that man or men are. Wow. It's yeah. Barnum and Bailey. Well, two different men. It was, and I'm sure they're dead by this point. And good riddance, because it's <laughs> but the worst. But if we didn't have them, we wouldn't have those animal crackers. Oh, oh dang it! And know? if we didn't have the animal crackers, then we wouldn't have the frosted animal crackers with the sprinkles on them. And that's really what we. And all then care we about. would just have no joy in the world. Okay, I it's take true. back everything I said. It all goes back to Barnum and Bailey. Thank you, Sang. Thank you, Barnum and Bailey. So, Sang, you saw it with another woman. I did. So, do you think that that and you? What were your expectations going in? Did you know anything about Wonder Woman going into it? No, I knew nothing. I had zero expectations. We were honestly going to go watch another movie that had bad ratings. And so we're like, let's just watch Wonder Woman Did you say bat ratings? (laughs) They had bat ratings. What were you going to see? Pirates. Uh, Uh, Probably a good move. Um, Who was the, uh, you know, and and we went over this in last week's, or two weeks ago was our our villain pitches for the next movies. Do you, uh, can you tell us um, what number Pirates of the Caribbean is out right now? Because we couldn't figure that out. I really have no idea. Okay, never mind. It's irrelevant. Um, (laughs) We'll probably edit this out. Um, Whatever it is, it's like divisible by three. Right, sure. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably true. It's either six or 12. Um, (laughs) Can you tell us first impressions of the movie? Do you want to do? You, do you want for me to unpack the brief plot of this because yes, we kind of got go into ahead. it, and then I want to get into your first impressions, and we'll go around the horn. Sure. Um, of Africa. That's true. <laughs> Ethiopia. We're sitting at a table that is shaped like Africa. Elf, elephant truck too. And so <laughs> this movie, Wonder Woman, starts out uh, World War One, right? So. Um, 
I like in this movie to um, the quick synopsis is uh, get rid of Steve Rogers, insert uh, Wonder Woman. Who's Steve Rogers? Captain America. So you think oh. about this. You scale it back about 30 years. World War One, same movie. Hmm. Really kind of same movie. Not the same movie. Okay, let me let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, ah. You're wrong, you but go on. <laughs> three seconds later, you staunchly oppose me. Um, <laughs> so this movie is... Correct me if I'm wrong in the details. We start out on this mythical island. We don't really know where it is or what's happening, but you, you essentially get this quick backstory this piece of exposition that basically says there are two gods there's zeus and then there's um aries is that right Mm -hmm. they like stink and hate each other uh they're brothers and one's good zeus is good aries is evil god of war god of war right and so zeus has this this island of amazonian women that are like basically there's a big fight aries got kicked out we don't know where he is is he hiding in the shadows and then you have this woman of Amazonian fighters and warriors in which we don't really know how babies are made with them. It's just, you just gloss over it. It's totally fine. Whatever. It's not a problem. And then you just have this island of Amazonian women that are bad A. They can do all this crazy stuff and they are trained with swords, bows, and all this. And all of a sudden you have this guy named Steve, right? Right. Steve comes flying out of nowhere. Played by Chris Pine. Chris Pine. Um, hubba, hubba. Or, <laughs> see, I agree. Uh, <laughs> Who essentially is Captain Kirk, who instead of Starship Enterprise, flies a stinky old plane. Same character. Trust me. This um, synopsis has a real, like... Bend to it? Yeah. And oh, it also nice. has, like, an undermining agenda. So I'd, I'd prefer you, Cameron. Let me, let me get halfway through, and then you can finish, finish the okay. rest of the story. Okay. Cool. So this dude comes flying in on his one-man USS Enterprise, comes crash-landing on this interpr- on this island. All the women are like, what is this technology? So basically, there's this barrier on this island where the island's just kind of hidden from the world. And if you pass this barrier, then bam, you suddenly are in this world that's back to like this reminiscent of an ancient Rome, right? Where you have all these wars. The mis- the mascara. The, the mascara. The mascara. The mascara. Um, the mascara, yes. Uh, <laughs> and, me. Yeah, I did not like that. I thought it was a little weird to name that in a very um They didn't name that that for the movie. Yeah, they could have changed it, but, but whatever. Uh, but- I would have named it Woman Island or Amazon. <laughs> I'm and, so glad you didn't write it. <laughs> guys. Gals. Amazon, Gal- two day shipping. Gal Gadot. <laughs> I'll catch. Give me three more seconds, and then I'll let you take the torch. She's like, "Tell me your ways. What's going on out there? There's a war. Oh, great! I'm going to follow you out, and we're going to go to war together. Take right. it away." So she, we find out Diana is the main character. She is the quote unquote Wonder Woman, and basically her mission is to find Ares, god of war and destroy him because she feels mm-hmm. like it is her mission she thinks that men that the men of the world by men she, we mean like mankind in general they're inherently good but god Ares, the god of war has twisted them to be bad mm-hmm. so that's her mission is to destroy Ares, and by doing that she will then turn all of the men from bad to good and by men people, human humans and um, so therein lies her mission to destroy Ares. So she kind of has it in her mind who Ares is. There's this like one creepy German general who's like super creepy. And this one woman with mm. a distorted face who's like trying to like make some chemical warfare. and uh, 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 Clayface. Yeah, Clayface. Sure. sure, yeah. It's a different, different person in the DC like universe, but Phantom sure. Phantom of the Opera if it were a woman. <laughs> Who really loved gas. Gas, yes. Gas woman. Gas woman. Gas woman. Um, so basically, she... That is the story. <laughs> she, she, sorry, I was playing with my zipper on my jacket. Her ways were really weird. And your ways with your jacket are really weird. Uh, ooh. <laughs> um, so yeah, saying, will you finish it out? We're spoiling. Spoil we're away. Spoiling. Yeah, mm-hmm. so really spoiling? towards the end, what did we find out? We find out that big creepy German guy who Wonder Woman kills... Is not Aries. And it's actually this other guy who she thought was their ally. He turns into this big monster. Yeah, so is he Aries? He is Aries. And so 
He was the uh, chancellor. No, he was a part of the cabinet. I could correct me if I'm wrong. The British cabinet. I uh, went to the bathroom during that part. Uh, okay, <laughs> and so you just like this guy is the bad guy. And you're like, yeah. who's this guy? And I was like, okay, I so, don't know him. So uh, we we glossed over a few things. I was tr- uh, totally on board with everything till about that part, probably around the part where you went to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And uh, you start you start to put together this team. This is where it becomes very. I'm going to go back to my Captain America thing. You're going to have this ragtag team that's put together to infiltrate, get behind the em- enemy lines to stop someone that's creating some weird, <laughs> someone that's creating some weird war stuff, <laughs> and uh, and they're going to put an end to it. But it turns out the bad guys. It's not who you think it is, and it's a lot more crazy. If you're going by that synopsis, <laughs> then it's the exact same movie. That's like, but you could make that argument for any movie where the bad guy isn't who you think it is. Right. And it's your typical twist. But how many, show of hands at the table, how many of you saw that he was going to be the bad guy from the second he opened his dumb British mouth? I didn't. Just Are you Cameron. Kidding me? Cameron thinks he's so smart. Did you already know the plot line? Okay, though? so this is where maybe I'm at fault. I did not know the plot line, but I knew it because this bad guy who is from Harry Potter. I always forget his name in Harry Potter. I'm on it. I don't know who he was in Harry Potter, but he was the, he's the bad guy in Fargo right now, and he's a creepy bad guy on the third Fargo season. Fargo the show. The show, and so he's creepy as all get out. And it's like, okay, this guy's definitely going to be turned into like a weird bad guy. So maybe I had that going against me, but it was very apparent like this dude, the, he's going to be the worst by the end of this. So like you were saying, it's it's kind of like this, you have this world of like, is man evil or is it Ares? And I'm going to be honest, by the end of it, Ares was kind of like, no, it's me. I'm the evil one. So here's the question. You had Steve who was kind of like, men are evil. So here's the question. Did we really resolve this by the end of it? Who's evil? Is, was it really ultimately Ares or was it ultimately man? I think the movie, sh- it explained it that men have leanings towards evil, but Ares will push them even more into evil. So like, whereas in a way, honestly, this movie had a lot of parallels with like biblical things that I have found a lot of parallels with it with like, the yeah, end, for sure. yeah. Where uh, and you go off of this too because I feel like you're really good at remembering things. But the way she, at the end, realized that what did she say? She was like, um, "No one here deserves to live, but that right mankind doesn't deserve right. her, right?" And the other Amazonian women, mm-hmm. right? I still don't think that was ultimately answered because that was the whole time. What? It was answered, but it was answered during the fight when they were yelling at each other. So I think that's why, because I remember that mm-hmm. question being answered. I just can't summarize it. Like basically, and then it showed a little montage of like the crazy plast, the crazy rubber face woman, mm-hmm. like having an idea about chemical warfare and like Aries, like kind of being behind her, like right. pushing her more forward, you know, like mm, yeah. where it's like, yeah, we're not inherently perfect, but he's the one influencing Influ- kind of like satan yeah. so you know? and i hate it that the movie still gave her a pass because it, you know at the end she still survives even mm-hmm. though this lady was making little gas lady was making little bombs and little like gas bombs mm-hmm. she's killing tons of these people and the movie never really did dish out her justice basically wrote it off as solely aries so in that case it was solely aries that was influencing her rather than her being inherently evil i disagree with you well how so I don't think, I think because she, like you say, she didn't get justice or we didn't get justice in her. That's what made Wonder Woman so great. I agree. Is her ability to extend grace because she knows that rubber face is not really (laughs) evil on her own. Right. And that like she can come back from it. So then really just influence then. No, that's not what we're saying. Okay. She discovers that. Y'all aren't saying she's saying. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like w- that's what Wonder Woman discovers. Like it's not one nor the other. It's both. Right. And so you can't just, you can't, if you looked at it black and white, like, like you said, like justice wasn't served really 
Well, I that's think, why I like it. It was complex. It was complex for a freaking superhero movie. I thought it was. Now the let ending. me. I think thematically complex. But let me go back into this, and and our this is where I really dock my points from it. It has the same format as your typical superhero movie, and I feel like everyone just kind of gave it a pass because it's one. It's a DC movie, and DC is like been making very bad. It's been making very bad superhero movies for a while there. And it just kind of followed the normal uh, development and then, you know, the fight and then the character realization and the power. But there's just so many elements of this that just skipped over. It was almost as if she couldn't ultimately defeat Ares, one, if, uh, if, if it wasn't for Chris Pine. And so kind of through the movie, I'm like, well, Chris Pine's kind of like the additive element towards the end that really kind of gives her the push to ultimately suddenly had the strength to beam out Ares, which that didn't make sense. She was just suddenly stronger because of her love for Chris Pine. And I hated the fact that she needed Chris Pine. The movie made it seem like that was necessary. Whereas in marketing and everything, it was like this woman is, it was misleading because I honestly thought it was going to be her own strength through which she was able to overcome the ultimate evil. And, and turns out her saving grace is like Steve. And uh, mm-hmm. I did not like the implied sex scene. This isn't as uh, progressive and as forward as people are really making it out to be. And I think we're generally just giving it a pass on this. Like, if I, Rotten Tomatoes currently has this at a 92%. I think this, if I was to give it a rating, I'd give it a solid, like, 70%. Mm-hmm. I mean, my problem is, my biggest frustration is people are building this up is this is the best actually it's currently one of the highest ranked dc movies of all time and it's just it's not that good it's good it's not that good that's my spiel i I have i put it out there you did i have a lot to say in retort rebuttal do you have anything to say saying no i just think you're really complex i didn't know this about you well and uh, i like i appreciate i thought you were going to take the other perspective but i appreciate that you're saying it's not progressive enough i really don't think i really don't think it is but isn't that the point too is well i don't think it's as progressive as people are making out to be yeah i don't you know as far as i mean sure it's you know and and don't get me wrong like there needs to be more female superhero movies right this is really kind of the first of its on its own and i think just because it's the first female superhero movie, you know, everyone automatically loves it. And I think there should be, there should be way more by now. There definitely, there should be, we should be on like the 20th or 30th or 40th by now. And it's annoying that we're here to where people are, an audience is finally like, I'll sit down to that. But, um, I feel like ultimately, uh, Zack Snyder and the people that wrote it, you had a bunch of men that wrote this and you can kind of (laughs) tell, You just can kind of tell. Hmm. So what were you going to say? I would say that I think it's a little... I don't think... Because ultimately what they were getting at with the whole Chris Pine relationship thing was that it was love. Mm -hmm. Like love is what gave her the strength. And not necessarily just love for Chris Pine, but feeling the feeling of love in general. Mm -hmm. Which that was the overarching and that was kind of like with the fifth element that kind of same thing like in it just happened to work itself out in love of him Mm -hmm. so i didn't take that stance where it was like without chris pine she Mm -hmm. wouldn't have done this like i think when she made that realization of like oh like that's what this feels like you know like love for man love for Mm -hmm. so that's but why did it have to be a man is my question. Why couldn't be another kind of love? I mean, if you're writing this story... Because it's a movie. Yeah, and I that's what we want to see. I want to see a love story, too. You know, like, I'm not yeah. going to lie. And what other kind of love do you think? Like a like a kid? Like for her child? For family or, or like for friends or mm-hmm. uh, any... It, there, there could have been a number of things, but I think just to make it appeasing, they probably wrote in just Chris Pine and they made the way for it. Well, remember, she came from an island of women only, so mm-hmm. she had never seen a man before. So that in itself was different so like she loved her family you know she did but like 
that was something she knew already. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. she was kind of all business. She mm-hmm. was all business. And the shopping montage, I loved it because she was like, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, she had the mentality of like, why do I need this? This is dumb. I can't run in this. You're like, mm-hmm. if she wouldn't have been like that, then I would have been like, okay, this is dumb. I know. But just the idea that we took time out to go through that. I'm just like, we get that she's a, this is alien to her, all this stuff, the, the man, the, the culture and all of it, they kept, they harped back on just how alien everything was to her and her own culture. Um, and what she was used to. I don't know. It, it seemed very repetitive by the end. Like, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like you're, you're, you're not from here. Like let's, uh, Let's but progress. I almost feel like they did that to juxtapose how strong she was and how different she was from the way society expected women to be. Mm. So they had to really try and show this is how they perceived women at the time. Mm-hmm. You need to wear these dresses. You need to do all these things. And she was like, I'm, because she was from another world, she wasn't subjected to that way of thinking. So I think seeing it helped you realize, oh, she's really different and helps women relate to that because we don't want to be seen in the way that those people saw women back then and seeing like, Oh, it is dumb yeah. like, to wear a pencil, sk- not pencil skirts are fine, but a <laughs> pencil skirt that like, you cannot like move in. M- walk in. Right. Because it's just what you're supposed to wear. Like and when she like barged in and was talking and Chris Pine was like, no, you don't talk to people. She was like, no, this is wrong. And mm-hmm. like everything that was countercultural, I think they had to show what the culture was like. Even though we know that's what culture was like. Well, we'd here at the table know, but the question is, does most of America know that? <laughs> and it just is like they kept hammering that in. Again, I give this movie a 70%. Like, I liked it, but it's like, not that much. Like, why, why do we, I don't know. I think people just, my biggest frustration is I think people, y'all are defending it well. I will give you your points, but I don't (laughs) think most people really understand the subtlety of everything they did. There's just, what? That sounds a little arrogant. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like saying you get it, but no one else gets it. But y'all do. Well, I think the difference is just perspective. Like you're coming at it from a guy perspective who rightfully so like you want to see this female empowerment and stuff like that where we come it from a, a female perspective where honestly i like the way they showed her femininity and her strength because yeah. i don't want to live in a world where you can't be both and i think that is why she was so badass is because she was she was super strong and she was protecting people and fighting for what she believed in and demanded respect, but she was also still feminine, Mm -hmm. which I think is part of the war on like being a girl these days. Like you can either be one or the other. You can either be like hardcore feminist and like everything like, or you can be like super, super duper feminine. And it's like, we're demanded to pick a side, but really Mm -hmm. like we have the right to be both. Right. You know what I mean? And I also feel like we might appreciate those scenes where they show the differences in how society viewed women and how she viewed herself. Because as women, we have experienced those injustices. So for me, like seeing it on the screen was like acknowledging that women are treated differently and yet she's still rising above. And so it's like this acknowledgement for me of like, oh, yeah, like you get me. And oh, I love her so much because she's representing who. I am and how society might want us to be, but, but we can laugh at it and be like, yeah, I don't have to do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more, it's more than just like plot or whatever you're saying. It's like what it represented for me, at least was just this representation of my experience as a woman. Right. So I think my biggest frustration in regards to that is that we, it was so much time was spent on harping on this stuff to make that apparent to the audience that story got lost in it. You know what I'm saying? Like the plot, the plot mm-hmm. suffered from it because you can't make a three hour movie. You can only really at most make a two hour movie. And so much of the time was spent on those elements and those items. And so you're left with a captain America movie, switch it out, 
you have a female lead and then you have to have all these ed- because it's the first female movie you then have to spend all this time on that and my hope in going into this movie was like can't we as society accept that these are norms and that there are injustices for women i honestly thought they would be past that because i feel like we for the most part we have a, we still have in, in in all sorts of areas we have a lot of progress to make but my going into the movie i didn't know much about it but i honestly thought or like this movie would kind of be like all right we're past this we don't have to harp on this stuff the audience will get this stuff but that's not the case i think for the general american audience we as a society need that little lesson Mm. and so my expectations were different and they weren't met and Mm. instead so we're left with a very plain superhero plot like i said Mm. and it wasn't that interesting do you think that, um, I'm sorry I said that what you said was arrogant. I feel bad. Like, we need to have a No, you mediation. said the thinking was arrogant. You didn't say I was arrogant. No, I, I said, yeah, you're right. I didn't. Um, anyway, but I think, well, which goes to say, like, would the movie have been different had it been set in a different time period? Because remember, this was set back, like you said, World War One. So things were very different back then. Remember when the woman even said, like, hopefully we'll get the right to vote? Like, it was set <laughs> uh, in a yeah. time where women didn't even have the right to vote. Right. So, like... It that played a big part in showing the differences in the sexes, right? More so than if it was done in 2017, you know, right? And um, because if I, they would have ignored that, it would have been like historically weird, right? Inaccurate, right? I mean, similar to any movie that's set in like during the civil rights movement, you know, like you mm-hmm. wouldn't not you wouldn't show address the that, yeah. And I think for period movies of that nature, you do do it to a certain extent. Do-do. Uh, you do do a, uh, a do do <laughs> to we all do do to a certain we extent, all <laughs> and I my my main synopsis will be the end. So y'all have defended this well. I will give you your props. You've kind of changed me on a few things, and I will go see it again. But I still think it's to a certain extent. I agree with you. I don't think it's a ninety-two on Rotten Tomatoes. Like I felt, I will say, I actually saw it on a date. So it felt a little weird to watch like a girl power movie while on a date with a guy who bought my ticket. You know what I mean? Like, so wait, uh, no, that's interesting to unpack. Why, why do you think? I don't know. It just, it seemed like, did you feel limited? No, no. I, and he, he's like super like, you know, pro female, all that stuff. But like it was, it just, was that on his profile? (laughs) Pro, pro women. Pro female. Um, it just, I'm probiotic on mine, and that's what got Amy <laughs> that's into being good for me. you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> good for your gut. I love bio. Um, <laughs> but- I just, it was weird, like, because I was thinking, oh, this would have been a great, like, friend movie to see with my girlfriends, you right. know, where we could be like, yeah, yeah, we're going to go get fit and, like, kick some ass. But, um, so it felt weird to, like, see, I don't know, just, like, the weird of, like, watching this, like, I don't know, this girl power movie mm-hmm. with a guy who paid for my ticket and my dinner. You know, right. I don't know. Yeah, it just I seemed see very that. like progressive right. and traditional right. at the same time. Right. Well, my, my hope is that eventually we get to a point in society where we're making female superhero movies that don't have to even, we don't have to use the word girl power. Cause you don't have man saying, Oh, that Captain man America power. was a great man power movie. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's where, that's where I want to be. Which I appreciate that. Then your point of view, I think is really like, the way. Because I want to show my future. Should, yeah, I want future. my daughter to like w- when my daughter watches this movie, you know, she'll kind of see. Well, she'll she'll have an understanding for history, right? Which is important. Don't get me wrong, but in terms of like a movie that really sets an example in which you're just looking at the character doing their thing without really kind of stopping every once in a while, like uh, you know, here's why, you know, here's my situation, what I'm going through. Like, I just I want our infatuation with our protagonist just to be for who that person is irregardless of gender. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and, but to be honest, more, more female superhero movies would be interesting because the guy ones get pretty tiring. Mm -hmm. So that's why I am promoting that. We finally make squirrel girl a movie. (laughs) That's what I want to get to squirrel girl, the movie. Saying, Interesting. actually, should we just jump into ratings? Yeah. Start wrapping it up. I think we should. So what we do with ratings saying, is we talk about the movie, quick synopsis of the thing we did, in this case, the movie, uh, and then give your impressions from as a single woman. What did you re- old like unpack it? Don't be afraid to like let it go. 
Like, would you really think? Ranking it from, rating it from zero to ten. Yeah, and then give wow. us a, no, a, a number. Make mm-hmm. an assessment. Well, I never really thought that much about the plot until tonight. But just based on my initial rating and um, thoughts from the movie, I went into it with no expectations. I didn't know what the plot was about. I didn't really know anything about Wonder Woman. And... I felt like this inner warrior princess in me <laughs> was unleashed. Mm. And I wanted to just rise up and I, I was just wanted to cheer her on. And I went out and bought a Wonder Woman shirt after. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't worn graphic tees since like high school and I went and bought one. And now look at you now. You're wearing a graphic wearing tee as we today. speak. I am. I know. So this is if... This one is Smokey the Bear. So if you're feeling a little but timid about wearing like graphic I, tees... I felt like mm-hmm. I could understand why I see guys and men out there who wear, I think, those stupid superhero shirts. Oh, absolutely. Captain America, superhero, uh, Superman, Batman, all those Green ones. Lantern. Like, I always think, really? Like, right. that's so childish. And now I can understand a little bit better because it's like mm. this inner superhero inside of you who you really long to be and you really are inspired by and you want to champion. And that's the only reason why I went and bought a graphic tee. Like, mm-hmm. I just felt like, oh, I just this is, want to champion This her. is the era in which I, I want my daughter to grow up yeah. and want her to live in which, because for guys, they're, they're, comic books are have always been for guys, right? right? Why can't they be for girls? Yeah. Why can't they inspire young women like they do with guys because guys we just attach to like every man wants to have a story in which they want to be the hero the person to save but why is that the case why has that always been the case I'm, I'm finally like let's get out of this like i love it when when women are obsessed with superheroes like i want my daughter to be obsessed wonder woman's fine but oh like she should really get <laughs> into squirrel, squirrel captain girl. marvel and squirrel mm-hmm. girl and all the, the there's so many good ones out there i'm hoping we see a bunch of movies like that but i get that so based on how it inspired me, yes, I would rate it an eight okay. out of ten. Very good, very respectable. Mm. Yes, I like that. Cool, I'm, guys. I'm sorry for being so grim, and I feel like the funnies have left my body because <laughs> I, I really, I really had such strong feelings about this movie. Like I said, I wish we were ten years down the line from here. There had to be one movie that started it all for this. And I guess in that instance, yes, you had to add in some of these elements at the beginning to really kind of that for the most part with American audience as it is today needs to be done. And you can have a little bit of fun. They were having fun with some of this stuff. I get it. Um, you know, there there was a good amount of comic relief in the movie. Every every good superhero movie needs that. Thanks, Joss Whedon. Um, he like the Avengers movie and Iron Man. Like you can't have a superhero movie this day and age without it also being a comedy, right? There's some good comedies. There's some good laughs and goofs in this one. But again, still think that plot was a little plain. The superhero plot. I love the beginning. Uh, I love the action. I love the choreography, and um, really did love like the settings and and like props and everything like that. I was thoroughly entertained by the end, but it was really after the movie. Actually, I'll say probably halfway through the big CGI explosion battle at the end. I'm like, well, this is this is kind of boring, which is weird for me. Cause I'm usually, I'm like, it was like the last battle is like any other one, but my biggest part confusion was what were wonder woman's actual powers? Cause it seemed like she was deflecting bullets with the wrist cuffs at one time. So I did a little Google, I had to actually look it up halfway through the movie as to what her actual powers were. I didn't know what they were. <laughs> so all that to say, I want there to be more movies like this. I want there to be more complex movies with even more complex characters. And so this is kind of a little fire starter. I give the movie a 70%, but as a married dude with a daughter that wants to see stuff that's far surpassing this, I give it a five. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I... Again, like saying, I had no expectations. Mm -hmm. I know that my mom has a coffee mug that from like 1990 Uh that has Wonder Woman on it fighting this like sea creature. (laughs) And that's the extent of my Wonder Woman knowledge. (laughs) My mom's coffee mug and how I always want to use that coffee mug. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a great coffee mug. It's nice and big. But um, so I didn't know anything. But I will say to your thing about 
you couldn't tell what her powers were. I think that was maybe done on purpose. Like she was still discovering what her powers yeah, were. Yeah, that's true. Right. So I because she was always a big like spoiler. what the heck? Like I didn't know I could do this, mm-hmm. you know. So I think you're right. I didn't right. know I could bounce two plates on two sticks. This is amazing. Yeah, like you're right she didn't they didn't define it. <laughs> maybe not the stick thing. But um I think it was on purpose. Um I I think I've said everything that meant a lot to me before. Like I love the marriage of strength and femininity. I think it's really valuable for young girls to see. Um, and I love that she was completely unembarrassed about how much she didn't know about this world. Do you know what I mean? Like right. she was never ashamed of her ignorance, mm-hmm. which I don't know if that's a good thing to teach people to be unashamed of ignorance, but like, she was just like, I'm not of this world. Like I'm not worried about it, you know? Mm-hmm. And kind of like, I don't really care what you think of me. And I love that she never, she never re- ever like acknowledged, well, the things she did, I mean, men were always like, oh man, she's so beautiful, but she never like, apologized for it or like got bashful about it like oh no you know she was just like yeah i am like look what else i can do like oh but i think the best scene was when she was crossing the trenches you know when she like climbed up out of the trench and like was running across yes. to the german line that was great. that was so cool and like the the history geek in me was like just freaking out because i have a weird obsession with um world war one but um I really, really liked it. I'm with you. The end, I wasn't a big fan of. I didn't like the big the big confrontation at the end. I think, I thought it was dumb that we actually met Ares a little bit. You know, like, yeah. I didn't really think yeah. we needed that. Um, and I, like, what happens next now that he's gone? You know, like, I don't know. So, I would say, coming from a single girl perspective, um, watching it on a date with a boy... I was I would give that a seven. A seven. Score. Good yeah. scores all around. It's pretty much where I thought it would be. Yeah. So we really talked this one yeah, to Yeah, this one was we? a lot more serious than <laughs> I thought it would be. Uh we're uh, going a little long on this. Um well saying thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, you so for much for having me for this your input. Fun. Is there anything you want to plug and say to our 20 listeners right now about, <laughs> you know, uh, anything that you like, you want us to support, maybe the company you're working for, yes, anything like go that? Yes, to everyorphan.org to learn more. And I just redesigned the website, so... You did? Look at how it looks. Nice. No, what, what are you using on that backbone? You using Squarespace? Nope. What page Cloud. Oh, Page Cloud. Okay, like maybe... new Squarespace. Do you think they would be a sponsor? No. Okay, never mind. If you need something to donate to, they're always taking donations. This is true. And you know it will go towards giving orphans a loving home. Home. What could be more and future. wonderful than that? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing, Nothing would be. <laughs> um, well, again, thank you for coming here. Um, um, Lauren, <laughs> uh, is there anything you want to say? Any, any last parting words? Um, I'd like to say for... Um, all my single friends out there, even if I don't know you, keep trucking along. All right. The friends you don't know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a... S- if you're a friend of a friend, you too, you know? Yeah. Just keep keep at it. Well, those are uh, wonderful parting words. Uh, if, uh, it's someone, been a rough week. If anyone wants to follow you on the internet, how can they follow you? You can find me on my Instagram page at Nitaroni, N-E-A-T-E-R-O-N-I. In Twitter? Neato's Tweetos. What? <laughs> and for myself, you can find me at Cam Carter 2010 anywhere you can find an internet webpage. Just try it out. Maybe I'm there. Maybe Probably. I'm not. Probably. Um, Squarespace. Yeah, maybe Squarespace. <laughs> I might be on there. Am I not? Um, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Out. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>